There it is. I was trying to find it. But how how are you doing, man? Good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's weird. Yeah. No, I I, I bet. I, I, I wouldn't know about but, it, but I, I've heard. So yeah. I've heard. But I don't know. It's fine. Whatever. Surviving. Yeah. That's that's all you could do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So what what have you been up to recently? I mean, as, as in terms of projects or something. You working on anything uh, you do? I was actually just right before this, I was like sampling a bunch of old records that I have. So I don't know. <laughs> good. No, that's good. Yeah. That I mean, it's, you- like, it's a good time to like since everything that I normally spend my time doing like came to a <laughs> screeching hole. It's like nice to have times to just weird out on like, oh, I could make some samples off my records and, you know. Yeah, use that time wisely, yeah. Fuck Let's... around with stuff that you usually like don't have time to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the perfect time to do that for sure. Yeah, but anyways, man, uh, I wanted to ask you. So, I mean, if you're from San Diego. What was the music scene like in San Diego yeah. when you were a kid? <sighs> Uh, I mean, it was like, I, I guess when I was younger, it was like all the, the like nineties skate punk stuff was pretty popular and like ska music, you know, like, it's like real big fish and less than Jake and lag wagon and descendants and all those kind of like SoCal skate punk bands was like my junior high. And like, you know, Sublime, 311, Incubus, like just anything like a Southern California bro would listen to. Yeah, the good shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the real <laughs> shit. Yeah, the, 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 the real ska. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as like San Diego itself, there, I mean, I guess in, I, there was like a kind of cool, like emo like early emo scene that I was like pretty into in high school and then like a lot of you know like get up kids would come through and play with like the local bands that were emo bands that were playing so I like went to a lot of those kind of shows um but there wasn't a whole lot and then there was like kind of like a metal like like emo metal scene for a while that was going on that like I went to a few and had some friends in those bands but never like fully dove into that right you right. know like some some like pit ninja like cartwheels in the mosh pit kind of sure music sure sure I mean there's it sounds like there's a lot of facets over there at the time I mean just music wise yeah I mean, you had a little bit of everything going on it just wasn't like a great music town, I think. Right. right. In, in my personal experience, like I, that's why like I turned 18 and like got the fuck out and moved to LA because it was like, I, there's just nothing. It, it yeah. didn't feel very uh, cultivating to be like an arty music kid. It's like you're either like in the military or you like work at your dad's landscape company or something you know you pick one one of the two i mean there's there's broad horizons in those two yeah two, two or you're options. like a, or you're like a really good surfer or skater which i was neither of those either so it's like so a sneaky third option is getting the fuck out of there or fourth option yeah. rather yeah. that was that was my op- that was the option i took yeah which is i mean it obviously worked out well yeah yeah and and no you know I have my feelings about San Diego, but it's a it's a very beautiful city. I'll say that. Yeah, it's it's cool down there. I I, I like it. Yeah. Uh, what was your first band? Were you playing shows down there, or was it when you moved up to LA that you started getting into? I mean, my like my first band ever in my life. Yeah. Was in fifth grade. I had a band with my two friends, and we were called Elmer's Glue, with a Z in elmers and so that's we played, rad we played two shows we played like a sixth grade graduation party and like a talent show at one of our friend's schools or something 
I mean, that's awesome. You didn't get a cease and desist from Elmer's because it was the Z instead of the S? Yeah, I mean, they came after us. That's why we broke up, you know? Like, yeah, you're like, all right, we got we to gotta dissolve this or, or change the name <laughs> we either can, way. We can deal with the politics. Yeah, the, the semantics of it. I mean, you're getting court orders and stuff. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to – and that's young. It's not what we got in this game for, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, okay, so no, were I, you – I had like other bands in high school, like just friends. Like I had a band called Ember Sky that was like really bad emo music. That but we like sold tickets at our high school and like you know it's like that kind of thing where you get tickets to sell to your friends at school. A, a pay to play situation, yeah. Yeah, but you're like 15, so you just think that's how it goes. And, but like we got to. I don't know. We opened up for uh, like Rise Against, so like we got on some like kind of cool shows at the time. Yeah, but, you know, like high school ended, and then that was it. Was just it was bad. It wasn't gonna. <laughs> but I've always played. Like I've always tried. I've been playing shows, trying to play shows since you know sixth grade or something yeah so i mean you got you got a history in this was it always bass that you were playing or did you ever play another instrument in a band no i played i started playing guitar so then like i i started playing bass like once i graduated high school because that was just that's what folks needed and then i kind of like like that typical thing (laughs) i feel like that's like 90% 90% of bass players get into playing bass because like there's another person already playing guitar. So you're like, I'll play bass. You never hear about the guys who are playing guitar. It's always the, you know, they, they don't really yeah. talk about that. It's always the guy who moves to bass. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even like what, like Ron Ashton had to move to, to bass in the Stooges because right. uh, that other guy, uh, what, what I forget. Yeah. But you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. He wasn't exactly. pleased about it either. But then I, I kind of like got into it and I ended up being better at bass than I ever was at guitar. And then just like everyone plays guitar. So there was always like better guitar players, but I was like, could hold my own on bass, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So when did you, I mean, was it straight out of the high school that you moved to LA? I mean, straight out the I, gate? I kind of like jumped around a little bit. So I moved out of San Diego and I moved to Ventura because I thought that was like basically LA. (laughs) And I was like way off. It's like an hour and a half away. But I had some friends going to school in Ventura and I had like some other friends from high school that were going to college in Santa Barbara. So I was like, oh, I'll be around. Like, I can go party in Santa Barbara. And I got, like, free rent with my friends in Ventura. And I can, like, be close to L.A. But I just, it's not close to L.A. So (laughs) I I don't know. I ended up, like, having to move. I moved back to San Diego for a second just because I couldn't afford (laughs) anything. And then, like, moved home for like a couple months and my parents were like I had to pay more rent at my parents house than I was because <laughs> they were like well if you're gonna stay here you gotta pay rent like you can't just like so then I was like well fuck that if I have to pay rent like I'll move back so then I ended up finding them landing in LA yeah where where uh, whereabouts did you move to LA in the my first apartment first was in Toluca Lake because again like I the only places I had been in LA were like Hollywood so like I was like oh I know where like Mel's Drive-In is and like Hollywood is but I didn't know like you know the cooler hipper neighborhoods or the cheaper neighborhoods were like arty people and like musicians were living so I moved to Toluca Lake with two friends who we ended up starting a band together and then like that band lasted for like five years pretty much like 2006 to 2009 
for that. Yeah, I mean that, that that's a good run, right? I mean, better yeah. than Elmer's glue, right? I mean, like, yeah, you know, totally. in a and longer we, lifespan. And that like kind of I don't know, that was when like the that like kind of it, big like indie scene, like broken social scene, silver sun pickups, like that kind of like 2006 to 2010 like indie boom arcade fire like kind of thing so we were like kind of in that vibe but it was cool because i got to play like at the echo like the, this venue in la that was right like yeah to play in spaceland when that was still around so i got like i was like 19 getting to like play these places where like elliot smith played and beck played and all these people that i was like really into at the time so it was cool it's like a cool i don't know it was cool to like be 19 in echo park like yeah, that's, i mean that's that's really young 40 at the house where like elliot smith died you're like whoa dude this is heavy and you know do you think that he killed himself or do you think it was his girlfriend i don't know i don't i I don't like to think about it, but all right, all right, all right. It's a conspiracy theory. It's all it's, yeah. It's, it's all I mean, hearsay. I, I, yeah, I. It's, it's you know it's hard. Look, to look we get into it. hot topics on this, Brandon. I mean, yeah, we do. Yeah. This is this is just how this podcast rolls, yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I. So well, I, really I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think anybody really does, uh, uh, yeah. except her and Elliot, uh, yeah. are two two of the main people. It's also right. the, the whole Sid Vicious, Nancy thing, you know. Yeah, totally. These things happen. But uh, yeah. how, much was, how much was rent when you first moved out here? Or so out my, to L.A., rather. My first, like, I can't remember what it was at the Toluca Lake place, but that was, I kind of, like, that was a weird, I don't really consider that my first place because I, like, I don't know. But I'd say my first, like, Echo Park apartment where i was like i'm doing this i'm broke in la and i'm making it happen and i'm you know super committed was i think i paid like 450 and it was like a weird apartment that i shared with my friend but you know it was like in the neighborhood and in the shit so it's yeah, that's not it. bad. I mean, yeah. four hundred bucks. I mean, it's unheard of now, but <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's insane. That was uh, you said like two thousand six, two thousand seven. That was that was two thousand seven. Okay. When wow. I moved into that place, jeez, yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's insane. And now, that was like, way too much for me. Like I barely made it. You know, like I was. It's a whole starving artist thing. You got You got to go yeah. through that. Yeah, yeah. Um. So so you moved out here your band lasted for like five years. I mean, that's a good run after that. Is that when you started meeting uh, Zach and everybody? To, well, to, so to I had no, let's see. When did I, I met Zach before I moved to LA. So like I, I'd been friends with his brother-in-law, Ryan Baxley and his sister, Alice for like years before I met Zach. And then Zach, I met him in probably 2000, I probably met him in 2006, like right around the time I moved up here. And then he, I had been up here like maybe three or four months. And then, and we had like started just, you know, like I was friends with his sister and brother-in-law and they would come up to LA to hang out with me because they were all living in Orange County at the time and they were all kind of thinking of moving up here so they'd come up and like we'd party at that cheap apartment and like Zach would cruise up a few times and then Zach ended up moving up here so so we were like hanging out and friends the whole time I was in that other band we were like still he was like working at doing recording stuff and working at different studios, but we were always like hanging out and partying together. And just, you know, sure. wreaking havoc on yeah. up and down sunset. When, when was the, when did, when were you brought into the project of Fiddler? Do you remember that? Yeah, I, so that was like after, 
the the band that I was in when I first moved here kind of like fizzled and then and then like Zach was working at the ship where he ended up meeting Elvis and Zach would always talk about like dude I'm hanging out with these like west side kids because Max and Elvis are all from like west LA and we were all like Echo Park you know east side kids right and he's like these kids are crazy man like they like I don't know he was just hanging out with them because he met Elvis through the studio and they had started talking about music and then we all just started jamming so like I kind of Max and Elvis or sorry Elvis and Zach kind of started like Fiddler but like we were all kind of like going in jamming of like Zach would be like studios open and Elvis is coming through like come through and I'd bring some beer and we'd like hang out and I'll kind of do it but then I started touring with another band and so I would like every time I was back we would kind of like reconvene play play a house party and then eventually got to the point where we were like let's let's go for it yeah what were the earliest fiddler concerts like if you, if you could describe I mean, them. Just, the the first like few sh- it was like house parties so just literally like kid like parents are out of town what's up you know and we <laughs> bring a pa and amps and just play in the living room or the backyard and then we were playing these uh these bike rides we played these like these critical mass kind of style bike rides where like all these kids would meet up in them at like 8 p.m. and they'd ride through town and they had all these different stops and then like at different stops like a band would play so we would our first show was in a skate park in Culver City and we just set up in this park and like found an outlet that worked and just plugged everything into one outlet and then like 200 kids on bikes rolled up and we like played and they like thrashed around and then they ride off and we like left (laughs) (laughs) so we did a bunch of those those were like the first shows were these family rides we probably did like six or seven of those and then house parties are like our own shows till we probably did like a year of that before we ever got into like an actual opening spot at a venue or venue, something. yeah yeah um did you i mean during this time were you like yeah this is going somewhere or when did you start to feel like all right yeah like we're actually making progress in this i mean it was just fun as hell to be honest like that that was just the initial part was like i i was touring with this other band that was like i was just a hired gun like got paid shittily but it was cool because I was like on tour and I'd never really been on tour before but they were this band that had been around for a while and they like had all this like beef and like resentments and weirdness towards each other and I was like new and excited and I was like this is fucked like I don't like this at all and I had just come from being in this band that I felt like really a part of that I had like worked on and like we played and tried to build it up and like never it never you know just fell apart at a certain point and then got into this like established thing that also was shitty and I was like man I don't like this like hired musician thing like I'm playing songs that I'm not a part of I'm playing for people that you know like it just something I didn't feel connected to and then every time I'd come back from tour and I'd like get together with the boys like Zach and Max and Elvis and we're just like thrashing not giving a fuck playing to 20 kids when I just played the show to like a venue full of people with this other band but I felt nothing and then like playing for these 20 like shitheads felt like incredible I don't know it was just fun it was just and then I liked the music and it was like after it was kind of like this feeling of after trying so hard to like 
be cool or be like a certain style or make it you know like overthinking your music to just like fuck it like let's play what's fun but then also putting making it that good too of like oh like these dudes are talented it wasn't like fuck it we'll just do whatever but i was like this is like i don't know it was like the best mix of all of it and it was fun for show wise to like just thrash around like i love it was just exciting like it had energy to it and not like you know hired gun like i gotta look cool like the rest of the band and like not do too much to distract from you know what i mean like that yeah right right no it, it, yeah yeah that totally makes sense i mean and that it seems like you're uh you like a kinship with everybody in fiddler as opposed to the other band i mean that's in that i mean yeah, when i totally. see you guys play i mean i've seen it a couple times and it's it's great it's like you guys are all together like yeah, working towards it, a, it a just, common goal it was just fun yeah I mean, it, it seemed really fun. fun. I mean, it was it was fun to be watching it and viewing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that, and that's great to have that. Uh, do you, without naming names, have you talked to other people in other bands? It's like, oh shit! Like, I'm really lucky to be a part of this band that is like we don't hate each other or it's not like a huge problem. Da 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 da. X Y Z. You you know what I'm saying? Like, are you, do, do you feel that way? Like, you're really like I'm really part of something special that I'm not whatever have resentment towards this person i mean or... I, I think it's a thing it's like you know like now at this point it's like it's more of like a family dynamic so it's like we have had stuff it's it hasn't been like a perfect ride for the history of fiddler because you know like you start with this feeling and then like you get to a point and then like it becomes like your livelihood of like now this band is what well not at the current moment (laughs) but you know what i mean i'm like right 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 we built it up to this point which is which is rad and that's awesome but like with that it complicates the relationship of we're not just like four buddies jamming in a at a warehouse anymore like now we have like, responsibilities and yeah, bills and, to pay yeah and your your like relationship gets more complicated and more complex but also like it closens in that way of like i don't know i, I we're in this about- together and, and like you're dealing with the same thing i'm dealing with because we're in the same band and like we started it and we're still it's still the same members yeah. as it has been to, since 2009 to 2021 i mean yeah that, totally. that's crazy yeah, yeah. And you like get to a point where like you know all that happened it happened naturally for us as far as like you know trajectory of career or whatever but it also happened very fast and so it's like all of a sudden in two years you're like whoa like i'm i've toured the world with these with my three friends and we started this you know like started a business together essentially and so your relationship goes from like yeah dude i'll be you know like let's hang out to like we're roommates bandmates creative partners business partners like travel buddies you know like yeah i know it's 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 a lot of time and yeah we prefer fellow performers so it's like you have all this stuff now it's like we're connected in all these different ways which you end up having to like kind of navigate that because it it is different now and it's that's not bad like that's a good thing and it's so you tricky, kind of like yeah. create your space of like all right now like you know you, you kind of set your boundaries of like right yeah yeah, and like I, it, in, in cool. any relationship with anybody, like with your family, of like I can't really talk to you right now. Like I need a little space, but that doesn't mean that like it's bad. It's just we need to like 
give each other what we need. Distance, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I gotcha. Did you guys move in all together at one point? Were you guys all living in that place in LA? Uh, We never all lived, Zach and I lived together for a while. So like when, in 2010, Zach and I moved in together to this place where we ended up like, it ended up being called the Fid House, where we like made our first record and printed all our shirts and had our some of our first shows. So it's like kind of this warehousey place that had like a studio kind of already built out from the people before. Yeah, Incubus or whatever. Who who owned that place? It was a uh, Trapped. Trapped. Yeah. yeah. It was it was one of those one of those bands. Yeah. yeah, and so we we lived there and then just had some like you know, like a rotating cast of friends that would kind of live there for a few months and dip and then another person would move in. But as far as the band, it was just me and Zach that lived there. But Max and Elvis were over all the time and we were like, you know. Always making stuff, sure. Yeah, always making stuff. stuff. Filmed like Ryan, my buddy and Zach's brother-in-law, like we shot some of our first music videos there and had parties. And it was kind of like the birthplace of, it was like ground control or headquarters for Fiddler chapter yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. What was, what, do you remember what the rent was there? I mean, accumulative? It was, Everybody? I think I paid like four twenty five. dollars um, But it, that was like, you know six people one bathroom like <laughs> it was pretty like you're all in each other's space shit. yeah oh definitely. yeah I, w- I wouldn't change that time for the world but like thinking about it now i'm just like that would i can't believe that any of us still talk to each other you know how the mean? fuck just, did i do that sure yeah, yeah. I did, but you're like young and that was the thing i'm just like I don't know, it's loud and noisy and you party and you're 22 and fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> How, um, did it ever bother you that most people didn't get the name right? I mean, I mean you, 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 you hear it It never a lot. Like really bothered me, but it's just funny that just know it. like we've said it a certain way in every interview and every thing but I, I can see like you read it on paper like people say fiddler a lot and I guess I get it like I, I can see that mistake the first time you heard it you're like yes that sounds correct and I will just say it correctly the whole time like did you did, have you ever misrounced it ever you, even when no. you first heard the term <laughs> okay yeah um, but, but I can see like there's a I feel like there's that's like become kind of a thing with bands too is to like kind of like misspell your name or like cut out consonants or something and it's like no we're actually this and you're like well it looks like this so I can kind of see like people being like fiddler oh like they spelled it different so it comes up on a google search quicker or something (laughs) whatever people do that for yeah what so um it's also you know it's an acronym then yes yeah <laughs> like, I don't know. yeah uh so, i mean you guys recorded the self-titled album there at that warehouse yes yeah. that you guys are all living in how what was the process yeah, yeah. like that i mean with recording that and, and stuff how, how long did it take and do you, do you remember uh, that time well it was kind of like at that point we had like had a lot of those songs like recorded like demo versions out on YouTube and whatever. And so it was kind of like we just recorded the set list that we had kind of been playing at that time. So it wasn't like a a big like we gotta go in and write our album and like it was just like let's do the the 12 songs that we've been doing and record them. And so, yeah, it was just all of us kind of like holed up in there and then recording and then, you know, like Zach just tweaking out on it because he was, you know, like had the studio knowledge. So he'd just be like up all night, just 
editing stuff and then we'd all listen to it and make changes and then sent it to someone to get mixed. So it's just kind of like, just the class, I don't know, just yeah. us yeah, in, you, a, in a room in our apartment for like a month, you know, like, come over, let's try it, let's do this one today. And it kind of just happened that way. So was the, uh, so I mean, the 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 whole album, that was the, the set list that you guys were playing at all the other, I mean, events and venues. Yeah, and for the most part, like, they were songs that we had been like, playing live for a while with a, a couple I think like give me something was one that we might have just done in the studio because we've never we've never really played that one live very often and then but I think all the other one and maybe shoot the paycheck was like another one that we kind of did in the studio but all the other ones were were pretty much you know like Max Cancer if we had been playing cheap beer we was the first fiddler song ever made so we'd been playing that for a while and wait for the man all those all the classics other, all the hits all the hits all the hits Gold, all the golden hits. oldies at this point <laughs> do you do you view it like that like that's our classic shit and this is the new stuff i mean like do you, do i mean you I, like it, no not really i mean they're all just they're all fiddler songs they're all songs that you guys yeah play. yeah and it hasn't been I don't know. We still play a lot of those songs live. So it's now when we, I mean, now that we have three albums, it's like, you know, it's pretty evenly spaced set list wise, or, you know, the last time we played a show was pretty much like, cool, let's do four, five from this album, five from that one, six from that one. Was there a song that you're like, I'm fucking so tired of playing this song? Uh, for, for at least for a minute you're like fuck this song i play it every night it's I'm weird so because there, it. there's like songs that we've literally played like i think we've played cheap beer every single show we've ever played ever. you know what i mean like yeah. it's just it's just one that we've always played and people like it and and so i but i never get sick of it because it's just so there's something about it's just so fun to play like it's so fun playing our songs live and that's just like my favorite part of being in a band for for just me personally is like the the live performance aspect of it it is just like that's the that's the reward for me you know what i mean i like all the other parts like i like the traveling i like the studio stuff and the collaborating on sounds and all that stuff, but like playing a show is like the pure release of where I'm like, that's when I'm like happiest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's great. Just, I mean, it's... In, just in general, like it's just, I, and so even if it's playing the same song or even the same set list, like when you're on a tour, you get into like, cool, this is our set for the tour. We might switch it up here and there, but like you get comfortable just like, in the flow of the set but like you do 10 weeks playing the same set you know five times a week you'd think you get bored but it's it's diff you know like it changes sometimes this song goes off and it's like different energy from the crowd sometimes like you know there's all the other factors that kind of weigh in on it and that change the feeling of like yeah sometimes cheap beer is boring but sometimes it's like playing it for the first time you know yeah definitely that's awesome that's really cool that it, it, it comes back around even if it's on a, the dark end it'll come back you're like i i like yeah it. i like it after all that's that's awesome you, I, sometimes you you will throw in you know like you throw in a song that that isn't like one of the staples of like cool let's let's try like that demo from you know that we used to play back in the day and then that like breathes a new energy into like the set or anytime you have a new song that you've like got worked out like that always feels good too to to show it and like work on it live yeah, yeah definitely what um what were the first what's the first tour you guys went on what what was that like and when was uh, that 
the first like real tour so we we i think we did like one like weekend you know like up to portland seattle with the growlers but our our first like we had done a couple like cool you know went to south by but our first like we're on the road in a van on tour was uh 2012 and we were opening for the hives which was pretty like they were like a huge a band that we were all super into and so it was like for that to be our like first tour we like don't even have a record out yet and we're like get to open for the hives it was just the best we were just some like, pretty catchy tunes dude they're they're good yeah i mean and, the, and just live like they're such like a pro band but like such good energy and funny as shit and like they definitely felt like like a big brother vibe of their like hey you know like watching them on tour really like set us up i think for like that's how we got to be on tour <laughs> you know what i mean like do they play suits and ties every show yeah. do they do that okay yeah and, and they the even have like outfits so they have their like show outfits that kind of change from album to album or tour to tour like it's always the black and white thing but like the styles change but then they have like like normal uniforms like when they're not on stage and so they all dress the same even when they're not on stage so you're like when they get out of their bus they're like all in black and white but it's like a comfortable version of like oh cool we got white sweatshirts and like black jeans and then they put on their like black it's so sick like the, the commitment to like i don't know there's something that i've always appreciated and it's not necessarily something we have in fiddler but how do like they that launder kind of, that, you know? I mean, like, on tour, like, it's like, oh, I got to get my shirts pressed. Like, there's, I like, sweat just around have, like, the a collar. Few, a few, uh, like, sets of them, and then they probably just, whatever hotel they're staying at, you know, like, take it to the laundry and give it back. But it's I, cool. I've always liked that, like, commitment to, like, your, they have, like, a character on, to who they are. You know what I mean? Like, they have, like, a persona that, is just cool it like creates you know like a, a bigger i don't know yeah mystery thing about about them of like visually it's striking it's like oh yeah like yeah and and, and, you, and you know who it is which is interesting yeah, it's like, suits uh, yeah it's, i mean it's, it's great vibe. like when you see them like walk out on stage or you see them like walking even just around the venue before the show and they're all like wearing the same thing it's just like it has like a presence which is cool like i feel like now when every when artists are so like accessible to every to everyone you know like it's almost like more of a thing to be like i'm just a normal guy playing a show which that has you know like i don't know value to it but i feel like that old like bowie rock star like mystery of like these people that are like larger than life or even just old like punk dudes with like you know alter egos personas yeah kind of let's yeah. feel from from the cramps or whatever and you're like whoa like dancing they're like not real people <laughs> you know yeah it's kind of cool yeah that's that, that's awesome so i mean that, that that was the first tour and like it worked out great yeah that was the first first tour how did that was, get set up? Were, were they coming over and they're like, hey, we want to tour with you guys or what? They were coming over and they're like, um, I think our booking agent at the time just like threw our name in the mix, you know, just like put us up for it. It, it came around to like the different agencies that they were going on tour. So like everyone kind of tries to get their bands on those opening spots. But they're like, you know a lot of bands you get all these sub submissions for like 
you know, tons of people to open up your tour and you're like, I don't know, like, I don't want to listen to all these bands. I don't know, like, or like you want to bring a band you already know of, but they like went through the list and they listened to every band and they like, they're really kind of cool in that way of like, they give a shit about, I don't know. They liked us. They liked our music and they, they like are really fans of punk music and like almost like students of it. So I think they were like, wow, these guys are cool, you know, like let's take them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of just like pure fucking luck too. Yeah. Like the draw <laughs> short. Uh, speaking of the hives. So I mean, like talk about bass lines, like really stand out ones. I mean, yeah. they're like a really good, like, uh, I mean, it's, personification it's of like that. that. It's just like Swedish. I feel like Swedish artists just have like, it, no matter what genre, there's this like hooky pop sensibility to like, their punk music sounds catchy as hell. Like their hardcore music sounds like catchy, you know, like. The 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 thing that makes the song, it's, it's, it's lying dormant, but it's like, it's catchy. It's catchy and, yeah, they, and they're, it's they're a good just, band, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, their rhythm section is just, it just keeps you like, in it the whole time you know just moving keep, yeah. keeps the train going i guess moving and doing it yeah yeah but speaking of dressing on stage what when did you start doing the freddie mercury thing i mean because it looks great dude and, I, and i've seen photos and videos of you i mean like live what when were you like you know what i'm gonna fucking do this uh the fr so i've done it twice and it was mainly just because the second time i did it was because I just already had the costume and we happened to be playing a Halloween show and we were on tour. So I like just packed it before I left. And I was like, I'll probably end up doing this again. But the first time was we were playing uh, Camp Flogna, the like Odd Future carnival. And it was just, you know, like a few days before Halloween. So it's like, you know, it's just, I ha just kind of had that costume in mind of like, I could probably pull that off. Like if I, you know, like get a good stash going, like it seems like an easy costume to put together. And then like, I l think Freddie Mercury is also just incredible. So it was like kind of cool to, I don't know. It's just fun. It's fun to dress up. As to, to pay an homage to him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, you feel like a little, I don't know, like, I feel like when I'm in that costume, like I feel a little more like emboldened or something. <laughs> like, That's right. Yeah, you gotta like take the take the mic stand from the from the base of it and just you know that that whole thing. Yeah, it was funny. At, so that <laughs> this is just like an, a story about that night. So we played that festival, and then Max was having a Halloween party. So I just stayed in like like after the show. So oh, I, that that I, night, you just you just stayed yeah. in it. All right. So I just stayed in the gear all day and then went to Max's house and like, you know, we, we were having a party. So then I was like, I got pretty drunk and I was like, all right, I got to like get home. And I decided I was going to take the train, like take the Metro because it's kind of close, which I should have just called the car. But I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll take the train. So I get on the train and then I ended up passing out on the train in like all my freddie mercury gear so i'm just like <laughs> this like passed out freddie mercury on the red line like trying to make it back home and i ended up like missing my stop and ended up like way up in north hollywood and like, like oh. bone was dead so it's just like this like fucked up freddie mercury like making his way <laughs> around la <laughs> but yeah that's that was that's awesome. I, I also that's saw you guys you, I saw you guys dress up at Beach Goth, one of the Beach Goths as uh the, the office space, right? Yeah. With the uh with the I mean like did that thing just get wrecked by sweat or what? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Because it's, I know every, Max took his off. I mean, and like that's yeah. Every time we've tried to do like a costume thing, it's just our shows are just too hot. <laughs> so it just it never lasts long like i don't know it's always like the first couple songs and then like everyone's back to 
street you know, clothes, whatever, they, whatever yeah. they can take off by the fourth song. I try yeah. to keep them on. I try to stay committed to the look as long as I can, but it it gets tough sometimes. Until it gets it's fucked hot. up. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I mean, and especially if you're playing indoor venue. I mean, it's just bodies yeah. movement. Yeah. Sure. What the, the whole nine. Yeah. Um. <laughs> was it what what is there a show that stands out to you? That's like that was a horrible show, and like that everything went wrong. Yeah. There was, uh, it was, it was like early on, but we played this show at this place on the Sunset Strip, which is, I don't know why we even tried, but it's called the Cat Club. And I don't think it's even there anymore, but it was like a friend's band, was, whatever. We were on the show and it was like a, one of the first I don't even know if you can call this place a venue, but I guess it was. And we played, and it was like two of our friends came to see us, and that was it. And then there was like the bartender and like one or two other people. And there was just this a lady in like a motorized wheelchair. And while we were playing, she just like rolled like it seemed almost intentional like she scooted up to the front of the stage and then turned and just went along the front and just went right out of the venue like mid song so you so like went down from, the, from six people to five people real, real quick yeah. and then just like 30 seconds into playing we're just like what the fuck are we doing here like we we had to pay a bunch of money for parking because we're like in sunsets oh. So we're just like we're not getting paid for this show. Like we could have played a house party. Like what are we doing? <laughs> so I think that was like kind of like a let's never do this again. Kind of like gotcha. we don't yeah. need to, we don't need to play these kinds of shows. Yeah, and and what's what's um what's like one of the best? I mean, like the best one that you could think of off the top of your head that really sticks out to you. Like this is a great show for whatever reason. I mean, shit. It's it's tough. I mean, I I can't think of like one particular, but like the well, actually, one was the we did these like it was called like two nights, not enough sleep. Like we did two shows back to back at the observatory in Santa Ana in Orange County and those were like i don't know that was just those were really good shows and who are you playing with it was, wasn't the bill i think like the frights and, and swimmers was that that one swimmers, i think and I yeah think I, no I was at that one yeah too. that was a good one i remember it it was it was good yeah like all those observatory shows were always good um the shows we like our la shows like at the regent we did a few there were always great. The first time we did the Palladium was like one of those, like, what the hell? Like, this is a surreal kind of thing of like, how, 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 did, how did this happen? Kind of moments, which is like a cool feeling of like, you're like playing like this place that like Sinatra played or something. And you're, I don't know. That's just fucking like crazy of all this stuff of like and it's like full and there's just kids like throwing shit in this like beautiful venue and you're like this is rad you know, insane, like, yeah. feels awesome I'll, I'll tell you something about that that show at uh at the observatory that you're talking i don't know what uh night i went um but i've met people since then that have become like close friends and they were at that show and I didn't know. I mean, like I'm talking about like five people that I didn't know that I consider like very close people that were at that show. Yeah. I just didn't know at the time, which is insane. And um, right. it would just come up organically. Like, yeah, I was seeing Fiddler with like swimmers in the front. It's like, I was at that show. I was like, yeah, that was a good yeah. fucking show. I mean, that, that's just so crazy that that one sticks out in your mind. Cause that one sticks out in my mind. That's like a lot of people were there and it's like 
seeing all these people kids going yeah, crazy it was like i remember those ones being fun because i get to like do all this these hang all these weird lights and i made this big like crazy head that we hung up so it was like i got to do all this other like weird shit that was that's fun for me to do like some stage design kind of stuff that i was like yeah this is cool like we freak the stage out and like all the stage guys were like yeah dude this is crazy i love it you know like all the crew guys yeah awesome. yeah definitely it, what um what are some crazy shit that you've like caught like when you're playing just like, looking out to the crowd and like you're like oh that's fucking different has, has there been anything that you're like that's that's odd Oh, like uh, people doing things in the crowd? People doing things, people in the crowd. Yeah, something along those lines. I mean, there's been like like people in wheelchairs crowd surfing, which is like awesome. And there's been naked stage divers that you're like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, and just like, I don't know. It's It's all a bit people jumping off balconies and you're like dude all right but like damn <laughs> it's just crazy yeah yeah like it's kids balconies. Get wild. Shit. like off the top of the you know like it's a theater like like, like, a, like a two-tier th- or like a like a top level and then you and got like, the, the floor the balcony level and here's the ground level and just <laughs> you're like all right shit <laughs> that's like insane. It rad, but then like i also I can't help but like don't hurt each other like you know what i mean like i have that i don't ever want anyone to like have a bad time because like some dude jumped off the balcony you know it's also fucking rad that some kid was pumped enough to like hurdle himself off a second story <laughs> That's that's insane. That's that is that is crazy. Um, people consider two as being the um, quote unquote sober album. Do you view it as that? I mean, yeah. I think there's that was definitely a thing that was happening. Like Zach was getting sober off some some shit he shouldn't have been doing, you know, or got caught up in. And so it was like, that was, and that was something just us as a band, you know, like you start playing these house parties and it starts like this kind of fun hedonistic, like let's get fucked up and thrash around. And then you've been touring for three years and you get tired and, and like you're, you're starting to like process all that stuff and people process stuff in different ways and so like I think that album was like a a time where it was like whoa shit like what happened and then Zach was going through his stuff so he was writing a lot about that and then I was trying to like process that and we were all just kind of like in our heads of like what just happened where are we now like who who are we to each other like you know like that the relationship stuff that I was kind of talking about earlier of like you start to like see just the dynamics change of like I don't know you're you're becoming different people you're not 22 living in like a party house you're 26 and like you don't know who you are and like where you've been and it's all just like kind of chaotic in your brain of like trying to sort it and I think that was what we were that album was kind of whether that comes through musically but it was a lot yeah that was a way to process it and what was where we were all in our heads of like and then where to you know like that pressure from there's always like pressure for your second record of like what's it gonna be are you gonna sophomore album oh yeah yeah sophomore slump thing and you're like what kind of band are we gonna be what kind of songs do we have to write and so like you're just i don't know but i think all in all it turned out cool we went through a lot 
and like but we came out with something that we were stoked on and then got to go play it and kind of like keep processing yeah um bad medicine for for example i mean did you have that idea pre-making i mean having the the conscious effort to like kind of deal with these things was that I mean, uh, a song that you were worried for a while that was a song that i i guys i mean zach and i were living together at the at, time at, so that, at that warehouse place in la yeah. okay and so like when when he was going through you know like his struggle with addiction and stuff and like going to rehab and stuff like that i was like very very close to it because we and and us two in particular like with like everyone else we got like some space from each other when we'd get home from tour but like zach and i lived together so we'd still be like right in we never like got separation from each other and so when that happened it just like there's a lot of feelings to deal with and so that was just a song that i wrote like of me trying you know my process of like being mad at him and but then like you know wanting to help and being and also just not knowing what to do like i hadn't really dealt with that kind of stuff before like i had I hadn't had friends that like had gone to rehab before that and so it was all like kind of like i thought this was just fun all the time like i was kind of naive in that way and so it was yeah it was just like shit and it's hard seeing someone that you care about and that you didn't know that that was ever part of their life and then all of a sudden you're like whoa like what what just happened like how, how like how long has this been going you know what i mean like all those yeah, yeah, questions no, yes yeah I, you I, have I to go through something like that you're just like blindsided and i was like what do i do and then, you know, you try to figure out, like, how can I fix it? And then you realize, like, that's not, it has nothing to do with you. But, like, I couldn't help but, like, internalize, like, you put your own, you know, you, like, start to question, like, what did I do wrong? Like, what, was this band fucked up? Like, do I need to fix something to make sure, like, you're okay? You know what I mean? Like, that right. kind of yeah. stuff. So it's just and then me dealing with that in my way that could be considered unhealthy as well as like I'm not talking to anybody I'm like drinking more than I should and not for fun because I'm just like I can't process yeah so, you know, it, was, it was just a lot of that it's right. nothing like new or like particularly you know I don't know. It's nothing like tons of people go through it every day, but it was new to me at the time. I and mean, it was, it's never like easy. I guess. Yeah, definitely. What was his reaction to the song when you like sh first showed it to him? Was he like, this is I mean, I think awesome, it was, or? I, I, it was hard. Like I, you know, like I didn't want to show it to him, but I also like didn't want to not because I thought it, was like I thought it was a good song and then I thought it was also just like I need you need to hear this kind of thing because like I'm not going to be able to like kind of tell you this at the moment straight, straight being straightforward with it, it's like yeah, yeah you're, you're so saying it, it without like, directly saying it yeah and I think afterwards he was like I, I think at the time he we weren't living together at that point and so I just sent, like, I think I just emailed it to him. And I was like, hey, I like, here's something I've been working on. What do you think? Kind of thing. And then he called and and was like, dude, are we okay? And I was like, yeah. And it, it, this was after, like, we had already, like, talked about, you know, it was like post rehab. So we had, like, had our, like, hug, you know, like, talk through stuff and like kind of got into a space, but I was like, you still need to hear this. And so, yeah, I think, you know, like it wasn't, he's like, 
it's pretty fucked up. And I was like, yeah, Wolf is pretty fucked up. <laughs> you know, like, ooh. so, but he, he gets it too. Like he, he's constantly writing about like his own, you know, he's very like sensitive in the lyrics he puts forward. So it was like, it wasn't like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> you know, like it was, it was good. Yeah, and it's it, and it, it's a good song. It was therapeutic for yes. everyone. Yeah. I think. Mainly for me, but I think for for him to uh, to be able to hear it in that way, maybe. Right. Um, and then flash forward to, I mean, Almost Free, and that was, uh, with, that was last year that I was put, or 2019? Yeah, it's 2019. 2019. What um, was, how was that different from the, so I mean, Sober album as opposed to to this one? Um, I mean, every, every record has been like a little different process wise. And so like the first one we did all ourselves, like we talked about. And the second one, we like all kind of like brought song like we had all these demos and then we were like trying to edit them down to this list and then we went and recorded it with the producer who kind of like handled the recording process and we did it in like two weeks like a song a day and then like it was done and so that was kind of weird and then the almost free was kind of more we had met ricky reed who produced that record and so we kind of like started the process with him so it was kind of like working with the producer throughout the whole thing rather than just the we're making the album now like he was involved in like making demos and listening to and like kind of like really hearing like i think there's something coming together and kind of piece really hands on yeah yeah and like and that was really fun just to have like i mean he he's a great producer and had like a a good ear and like we had never really worked with a producer in that way so it was like it, it made it really fun and it made it like really maybe like more collaborative in a weird way even though like sure definitely and uh it seems to have like a i mean there's a there's a different um sound from this album yeah it was like it was was cool i think a lot of that too of like there's a little bit more like groove and like dancey kind of parts to it yeah that it was just us getting like we all listen to like so many i mean you hear every band say this so it just sounds kind of douchey i want to hear it again i want to hear it again let's hear it you know like we're we're like categorized as like a punk band but like we all you know everyone listens to tons of different stuff and is influenced by tons of different music and i i think that was like a part of almost free in particular of like we just kind of didn't want to make like a just a fucking all the way loud punk album yeah in the same vein yeah yeah, and it made it more fun, and it's still very much Fiddler, and it has that attitude, and there are those songs that are, like, pissed and whatever, you know, like, loud and angry or yelly. But then it was, like, really fun to, like, have horns on a song and, like, write, you know, like, mess with all these weird sounds and have, like, weird percussion and samples and, like, stuff that's really fun it's not just all right bass all the way loud guitar all the way up it's just which that's fun but you know you're, you're taking a new direction and and you guys, yeah, you guys are doing what you want to do that's awesome man that's it's really cool and ricky, ricky was really great at that like for for us at that time of just being like he he's just good at at like giving bringing out the best in everyone, which is like a good, you know, like good sign of a good producer of like, hey, you got really good ideas for this, even if it's not your instrument in particular, but like, can you, can you come up with something for this? Because you seem to like, 
have something there. And then like he wanted you I back mean, on guitar. That's what he wanted, dude. He it's like <laughs> I, I knew that you no, were a guitar player. I, mean, I, I there's no way I will play guitar in Fiddler. Elvis is way too good at guitar. And he's fucking rad at guitar. So I think everyone in the band is better at guitar than me. You even Max? Yeah, Max is that? Max is really good at guitar actually. Well, he's not really. He's he's really good at guitar. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah. Um, no, but it's fun because like we all we all do play multiple things. Like I'm not just a bass player. I like coming up with key parts and vocal harmonies and stuff like that. And like Max does the same. Like he can play everything, and Elvis can play everything, and Zach can play everything. They all write and record music on their own outside of the band. He's just so it was like fun to work on something together where everyone kind of got to bring a little bit of like all of that of like cool to the table, I, like yeah. mess around with this piano part and come up with something cool. And then it, Ricky was like, "That's sick." Then like, go bang on the bongos someone else you know what i mean so it's just it was fun to have like a to make a record like that in that way i guess and i think that's yeah. why it's kind of like more wild not wild but like more kind of different sounds and styles of yeah it's different and that's and that's like awesome that. speaking of side project los bolos can you talk to me about that yeah so that's that started with <laughs> it was elvis uh myself and then this band together pangea who we've been friends with forever which i'm sure you know if you've been to the observatory ever <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> they, oh yeah. Like, yeah we played a lot with them and they're still like closer so whatever we were playing a show back in the day and it was some like prom themed show and we ended up like all being in bolo ties unplanned. And then we got like drunk and we were like outside the show, like having a cigarette. We're like, man, we should just start like a band called the Bolos. Like just, that's where it started. Everyone was and, wearing bolo, and, and th th that was really not planned? Just, everybody just ended well, up wearing one? It was like everyone was, it was like this kind of dress up theme for a show. And so we sure, just- Sure, but everybody happened. chose bolo ties, which is just like yeah. interesting. All right, yeah. And then we were like, that's kind of cool. We just were joking about it. And then in, nothing happened for like three years. And then, but it was something we always kind of talked about, like when we'd hang out of like, yeah, let's do some Bolo songs or like, you know, like, and it was always going to be a cover band. It was always just going to, just a fun, fuck it, kind of like, we all have these other things that we like work on and like care about. Like we all have our main bands that we, are very involved in but like this will be like the hey, if there's a night where everyone's off tour like let's put the bolos on and like play a show and play some, just bar band kind of vibe yeah but, so yeah that's where it started and then that's kind of still where it's at like we made a record that's out now but it was also just for like our buddy ryan baxley who I was talking about before Zach's brother-in-law, who's also in the band, was like, I want to record, make a Bolo's record for my birthday. So we did that at our friend's studio for two days and made a record. And so it's, that's kind of like... That's cool, man. That's, that, that's, that's really cool. awesome. That's what the Bolo's are. It's just like, as many of us that want to get together and play, and then I think we've had as many as nine in the band at one show and as little as three so it's like that's a lot and a little of bolos man that's good yeah it's like yeah. whoever can kind of make it and like shows up to like learn the set the day before you're in who's <laughs> playing well awesome yeah. man dude thank you so much for doing this real quick um they people can find your music i mean at mom and pop music.com yeah that's where the albums are at least uh, the, yeah, the self-titled and the third one, right? Yeah, the first three records are all on Mom and Pop, and they're all on all the internet. Things. All the platforms, Bandcamp, YouTube, 
Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot Spotify, of like SoundCloud, old, all of it. Old right? Fiddler stuff on YouTube that's not out anywhere that you kind of just have to dig deep and some real dumb videos. Um, the Bolos, Los Bolos record is out. At, on Bandcamp, um, right? That's that's primarily where it's on at? Bandcamp on right, I think it's Righteous Dog Records. And yeah, it's, that's also on Spotify. Um, I don't know. Awesome. And is, is, is there anything else you want to promote real quick? I mean, since we're doing this? Um, there's the, my studio that I have with Ryan and Alice, who I talked about, called Mind Palace LA. We make, you know, music videos and photo shoots and creative, any creative endeavor you could hope to have. Awesome, uh, man. Yeah, I don't know. That's whatever. Is that it? Is that it for right now? You, you got an Etsy? So. You got an Etsy or what? You, you're not selling anything off of Etsy? Look, you know, it's, just keep checking my gram for my Etsy, uh, my pop-up restaurants, my uh, dance tutorials, and any and everything else. Right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, dude. I'm, I'm yeah, going to stop recording this, but I'll, I'll talk to you in one second, dude. Thank you, man.